In this tutorial, I'll show you some page layout techniques that are guaranteed to help you produce professional looking publications. I'll begin by setting up a grid layout structure. Grid structures make it easier to create page to page consistency by providing guidelines for object placement. They help to ensure that the pages of your publication look good and also significantly speed up the layout process. I'm starting with a new blank publication, but you could also overlay a grid onto an existing document and then use it to rearrange your page elements. To create a grid, click Layout Guides on the Context Toolbar to open the Layout Guides dialog. On the Margins tab, specify the number of rows and columns of the grid and the size of the gaps between them. Great, I now have a grid framework that I can use to place my page elements. Remember that these are guidelines only, they won't be printed on the document. OK, let's add a text frame. I'll expand the text frame flyout and choose a standard text frame. Now just click and drag to place my frame on the bottom three rows of the grid. For demonstration purposes, I'll just fill the frame with placeholder text. On a page this size, a single column of text like this would be difficult to read, so let's change this to a two-column text frame. I can do this on the context toolbar. I'll now resize the text frame to span four of the five columns, leaving an empty column on the left. Notice that each column of my resized text frame now spans two columns of the grid. OK, let's place an image in this empty space at the top of the page. I want the image to line up exactly with the leftmost edge of the text frame, so to help me, I'll use another page layout guide, Dynamic Guides. To turn Dynamic Guides on, expand the snapping flyout on the hint line toolbar and select the Dynamic Guides option. Now to add my image. First, I'll choose a rectangular picture frame from the picture frame flyout. To create my frame and align it with the text frame, I just hover over the upper left corner of the text frame till I see a small green dot and red guidelines appear. Now I'll click and drag to draw my frame. Now for the title and logo. For this I'll use the logo from the gallery tab. If I ungroup the logo, I can move, recolor, and resize its elements independently. Let's do this now. Notice how I am using the columns of the grid as guidelines for resizing and positioning the logo elements. OK, now I want to crop my image and align it with the lower section of the logo. To help me do this, I'll add a manual ruler guide by dragging down from the horizontal ruler. And now I can use the square crop tool to crop the image, lining it up with the ruler guide. Just a little bit of fine tuning to position the title. There, that looks great. Now let's add a pull quote to the empty column here. First, I create a new text frame. Now I'll increase the font size. And again, I'll fill the frame with placeholder text. Let's now change the color of the text to one of the scheme colors. To complete my layout, I'm going to create a watermark effect on my master page. To switch to master page view, you can go to the hint line toolbar and then click this button here to quickly toggle between your regular publication page and master page view. You can also expand the master pages section of the pages tab and then just double click on the page you want to view. I'll add a picture frame to completely fill my page. Then drag the image I want to use as my watermark directly onto the frame. On the Transparency tab, I'll apply the 84% Transparency Swatch. 
Okay, switch back to normal page view. And there's the completed layout for the first page of my publication. Let's add a second page to this document. You can see that Page Plus applies the grid structure and the master page to the new page, making it easy to create additional page layouts that are quite varied, but which still work together in the same publication. Here I've used the same grid, but have created a second master page, which I have assigned to the inner pages of my publication. As you can see, the right layout should provide a consistent framework to help you organize the various elements of your pages, but should also be flexible enough to let you exercise your creativity.